Hello, this is Dr. David A. Gatros, Department of Computer Science at Florida State University, and I'd like to welcome you to my undergraduate lecture series on selected topics in computer science. You can find these videos and others at my YouTube channel at the URL listed below, or you can simply go to YouTube and search using Gatros and FSU as keywords. Now on to the lecture. This is the explanation and solution to a programming exercise that I, I gave my students on uh, accessing two-dimensional arrays in assembly language, MIPS assembly language to be specific. So in this particular problem, what we're, going to, we're going to have a 2D array, it's a 5x5 five five array, and we're going to show you printing the array, which tends to be a little tedious, and then the more interesting aspect of how to access individual uh, cells. Let me spell that right. Uh, cells within the array itself. Now I'm not going to type it in. I've actually got the program already written. I'm just going to bring over snippets of it and kind of show you pieces of it. So let me let me start over here. I'm going to grab the main portion of it and bring it put it inside my screen here. <coughs> so this starts up. We've got a few messages out to print off the uh, uh, what the exercise is. A message to say enter a row number and enter a column number and then of course the value at that location but what's really interesting is the matrix definition itself this is uh, the uh, matrix it's a 5x5 five five array or it's meant to be a 5x5 five five array so the first five will be the first row and the next five will be the second row and of course this will be the third row and then the fourth row and then finally the fifth row <coughs> now to access them, we need uh, a little bit of an explanation. Okay, so uh, the the first uh, element in the first row is offset uh, zero zero, which means that uh, zero offset from the beginning of the array itself. Okay, uh, the second element in the first In the first row is offset uh, zero on the row and four bytes in uh, from the from the first uh, on the first column. <coughs> now, to, to illustrate this uh, on the the uh, first element on the second row, uh, well, is a uh, uh, is an offset of 20 uh, on the row. In other words, we have to go in 20 spaces. Each one of these is a word in four bytes. So right here represents uh, 20 characters from the beginning. And then, of course, uh, zero offset on the column. Okay. Now, the to tie this all together, we say the uh, second element on the second row is an offset of 20 on the row and 4 on the column. Now to see that, here is the first row. Okay, Here is the second row. That's 20 bytes in and then add another 4 and that will get you to that item right there. It's important that you understand this before we uh, proceed on into the program itself. Okay. Well, let me show you the code. And again, I'm just going to put it up here and, and show it to you. And I'll actually, uh, on the uh, Canvas site that I have for the class, I'll put the actual code out there so you can see it. But it's worthwhile for you to actually practice writing the code. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to print the array itself. And uh, I'll bring uh, that code in. Okay. I'll bring the code in here to actually print the array. This is the main routine call. We're going to call a subroutine. Now let me move this over there. So uh, it's helpful if I put the comments, uh, uh, load the address, uh, or load the uh, v0 to tell syscall to print a string. Okay. Load the address of the string in A0 and then finally print the string. Okay. 
Now we're going to uh, call the subroutine. That requires a little bit of housekeeping. Oops. do that. Call the matrix subroutine and then uh, restore. Let me spell that. Restore the return address and then of course restore the stack space. So all of this code right here, let me highlight it, is just to call the print matrix uh, uh, subroutine and we're not even passing any parameters so a little, little tedious. Now let me add the routine to print the matrix itself. It is um, somewhat uh, tedious, somewhat tedious, a little bit long and it requires a little bit of an explanation so I'm going to pull this down in here. Hold on, I'm going to paste it it right there. All right, so here is the print matrix routine. It starts up here and goes all the way down to the bottom. Let me explain the code to you. I'm going to load the address of the uh, uh, load address of matrix into register register S0, and we're going to use that. I'm going to keep an index of the row and of the column that I'm working on, so I'm going to use them as counters. Now, what I have to do is um, every row I have to subtract one from it. Now, the reason I have to do that, and let me put that comment right here, I'll, I'll explain it to you. Okay, and I'll just put a block comments right here. I like to do this, kind of separate it out. Okay, to get to uh, this is an example. Example uh, to get to the address of let's say row two, column three. I have to perform the following operations, and this is assuming that we are using the uh, numbers 1 through 5 and 1 through 5 to represent the row and the column number. Okay, okay. I'm going to subtract 1 from the row and column number uh, temporarily. Use my spelling. <coughs> now, the reason I'm doing this is for the following reasons. Okay, I have to multiply the row minus one times 20 to get the row offset okay. and that's because I know each row is worth uh, has 20 bytes and I have to multiply the column minus 1 times 4 to get the column off offset. Hence the reason I subtracted 1. Okay. The reason I subtracted 1 is because the first row, the first column, okay, there's no offset. So 0 times 20 plus 0 times 4 is zero so there's zero offset. For the first row, okay, and I'll give you an example here for the for the first row, okay, and say third column the offset is uh, zero times twenty plus okay three 2 times 4 
which is a total of 8. So it's 8 by 10. Now if we go up here, again, this one's 0. Okay, again, this is uh, uh, the third column. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is 0, this is 4, and this is 8. So there is the 8th column right there. Or not the 8th column, but the 3rd column. Okay. So I get the uh, multiply the um, uh, column by 20, the or 4, the row by 20. I uh, add the offsets together, and then I finally add that to the address of the uh, item itself, and then I load that word into a register and I print it out. Uh, I also put a space, uh, a few spaces beside it. Okay. Now the remainder of it right here is to add one to the column add one to the column and then check to see if you're at the end of the column and that's done by checking to see if the column divided by five uh, is a modulo five in other words there's a remainder of zero if it is then what I do is I reset the column to one which is right here okay reset the column number to one and I add one to the row number and I check to see if that is uh, divisible by five if the row number is divisible by five, or if, uh, then I am done with my uh, <coughs> then I'm done with the uh, printing of the matrix, and I uh, uh, go ahead and uh, go to the uh, uh, end of the routine. Well, let's run this. And again, here's the code. Look at it. We'll save this. Fall we'll save, and we'll run it. And we'll see if we've got any errors in it. We'll say file, initialize and load file. Let me get to the right file. Let me pause this. All right, we're there. Let me reinitialize and load the file. Let me. Here's my example right there. And let me say run. And let me pull this over. And there is the matrix itself. It's. Don't worry about the spacing in this particular situation. It's not not terribly important. But you can see that it does exactly as we said it was going to do. It prints out the first row, gets to the end of it, goes to the next one, and continues printing on. Okay. Now, the uh, that tended to be the most difficult part of the uh, the exercise itself, printing the matrix, but it's usually one of the first things that you want to do to make sure that the matrix is actually represented correctly inside the machine. Alright, well now then let's go on to the next part of that. Let's, uh, let's do the part where I enter in the row and the column number and then have it printed out. Okay, so let me uh, write that code in here. I'm going to change my main routine. I'm going to put it right there and I'll explain that. Okay, okay. here is that code. I'm going to go over here and grab it. And I'll put it right here. So what we're going to do right here is, of course, this line of code prints out a message that says, please enter in a row number. We read in the row number, and then we uh, save that to a temporary register. And then we load the message in, says, please print out the column number, and we read that in. Okay. And then uh, we move them into the parameter. We move the enter to, to a temp register, and we move the row number to parameter 1, and move the column number to parameter 2. And then we call a routine PRT num. Okay. Well, let's go down and pull in PRT num. That's the uh, routine that's actually going to accomplish this. It turns out to be not very complex at all. So let's go down here and take a look at it. I've already got it there. This is it. And you can see we save the row number, we save the column number, we subtract one from each one of them because we're going to use that to multiply times their uh, offset. We multiply the row times 20 and we multiply the column times 4, we add those together and we add those to the uh, <coughs> excuse me, we add those to the address of the uh, matrix and then we load that word and we print it. Uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. So let's save this. Alright. And let's call our routine. Let's best try it. Say file, reinitialize and load, matrix example. And now we're going to run it. So here it is. Okay, it says enter in the row number. Well, let's do this one. Let's print out 18. So that is row 1, 2, 3, 4, and then column 3. 
So row four, and then column three, and we come out with the number 18. Very good. So that's how you access individual components within a matrix Excel. You have to know the offset of the row, and you have to know the offset of the column. Um, this is based upon uh, a full word. Let me go up here. This is a word. Each one of these is worth four bytes. If its character would be one, uh, double floating point numbers would be uh, eight. Uh, put this code out there. It is worthwhile you attempting to write this yourself. It's good practice uh, in preparation for the Sudoku puzzle, which is which is quite quite complex. It uh, uh, it is challenging, and you need to have mastered the uh, idea of accessing two-dimensional arrays inside of MIPS. Hope this uh, helps you out and look forward to doing another one.